It's halftime. Al DeMarco here along with Steve Budin. Of course, I take a look for everything from a handicapper's perspective. I've been in this business now for 25 years. Steve takes a look at it from a bookmaker's perspective, a guy whose father was a bookmaker, a son of a bookmaker, a guy who basically gave birth to the offshore bookmaking <laughs> business, gave birth to it. Sounds kind of bizarre, but that's what you did. Absolutely. You created it, buddy. Absolutely. And uh, this is the part of the show we like to take a look at various aspects of gambling, talk about a little strategy. Uh, we'll have two more game previews coming up on the uh, big game, of course, Indianapolis and Tennessee in just a moment. But Steve, let's go backwards once again and look at last Sunday's game between Arizona and Tennessee because we have often talked here week after week about the importance of betting favorites early but here we had a slightly different component added to the mix because suddenly at about 11:30 Eastern time on Sunday morning it was announced that Kurt Warner was not going to play Matt Leinhart was going to get the start now all week they had been hinting at it but that's when they came out with the firm decision yeah but really you know but really the fact was that Kurt Warner was scheduled to go I mean that was the word that was how it was going to be and then whispers weren't even really coming until about 11, 11.30, and then that's when the word was announced. Now, I know it was interesting because you had a play from the Costa Rica crew Correct. of yours, which was their fifth straight winner, winner on uh, Saturday. You had it Saturday at 6 o'clock Eastern time, and by 6.20 Eastern time, it was on your website, you had on Saturday night with Arizona. Now, I know you always say you don't sit on winners. Right. None of us like to sit on winners. Right. This doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make any sense when you've got a favorite to wait to the last minute. You've got to bet the favorite early because the public is always going to bet the favorite up, especially when they're at home, especially when it's a, a public team, especially when it's a team that's on a red-hot winning roll like Tennessee, and it, when it's a home favorite as well. Well, we don't say things on this show just because we love hearing ourselves talk. Week in, week out, we constantly tell everybody out there that when you're betting favorites, you can't get lazy. you got to bet it early because that number's going nothing but up. And as we saw, it turned out big for our clients who jumped on the game Saturday night with us and got the cover when everybody else lost the game. Right, exactly. And, you know, on Saturday night, that line was anywhere from one and a half to two points some two and a halfs out there offshore, some notorious places where you're always paying a half point to a point more. And that's why we told everybody to buy down. And we told everybody, right, you had on your site, buy down the half point. I know I didn't use the game, but I, hey, once again, we always tell you to buy down half points sometimes in our analysis, and that's what you did based on this Costa Rica cruise analysis and uh, release on this play. So everybody that got it Saturday night got the win. Everybody that came in Sunday morning before the announcement with Bought Kurt it Warner down and got the got win. The win. And reality is, what really was strange with this game, once Kurt Warner was announced he was not going to play, do you know in Vegas, for example, at the Hilton, the Mirage, and Caesars, that line actually dropped down to one and a half from two for about a half hour to 40 minutes. And then about 12.30, 1 o'clock Eastern time, it skied to two, up to two and a half, and then it kind of stabilized until about 2.30, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Then it jumped up to three, and it stayed at three, up until about 15 to 20 minutes before game time, then it went to three and a half. Well, well who, in, yeah, who in their right mind is waiting until then to bet the favor? Well, what happens is, is historically, you know, people don't have enough money to contemplate four o'clock games. So you got your customers and they're all looking at one o'clock and they're looking to make money at one o'clock so that they can bet the four o'clock games. Hey, if I make money at one o'clock, there's no need for four o'clock. And if my game's at four o'clock, then my game's at four o'clock. I'm betting it as soon as I possibly can. And guys, this is just another reason why when Steve says you don't sit on winners. Guys, there's ways to get the action early. Sign up for his Twitter feed. Sign up for his Facebook page. Sign up for text alerts. No reason you should ever miss a play. Exactly, especially when it's released 22 hours in advance. There is a strategy involved in betting. We're going to talk more about other strategies right after this short commercial break. Steve Budenback, CEO of the world's largest online sports handicapping community. I want to take a minute and talk to you about Las Vegas. Spent my entire life playing in Vegas, so take it from me, there's only one hotel that captures the true essence of Vegas, and that is the all-new Golden Nugget Hotel in world-famous downtown Las Vegas. You can get a taste of the high life for free because once a month, we're giving away on our website to one lucky winner a free VIP high roller getaway weekend at the Golden Nugget. That lucky winner gets a high roller suite. 
VIP limo service to and from the airport, VIP check-in, and VIP seating to the Gordy Brown Show, only at the Golden Nugget, and all for free. Here's the best part. Like I said, this contest is absolutely free to enter, no purchase necessary. Go to our website now, click on the VIP getaway link in the top right-hand corner, enter your email address, enter your info, you could be the next lucky winner. We're giving away a free high roller weekend once a month, so don't miss your chance to live large in Las Vegas, only at the Golden Nugget. Told you it was going to be a short break. Listen, one thing, let's talk about, uh, we're hanging out every single Sunday at the Golden Nugget. Uh, what is the difference, and you as a bookmaker knows this better than anybody, and you are a casino player as well, the difference for gamblers, sports gambling on games versus casino gambling, what's better for the better? Right. Well, the Golden Nugget's not going to love this, you know, this segment, but I, the truth is, is that when you bet a sporting event, you take one risk over a two and a half hour period of time. When you bet blackjack or slot machines, for example, there may be four, 500 risks in that same two, hour, two and a half hour time period. So the more risks you take, the better it is for the house. So that's why if it was up to casinos, they'd have no sports books in it whatsoever. It'd be all slot machines, but they have to have sports books because if they didn't have sports books at the Mirage, they would jump over to Caesars, go to the sports book there, and then lay their blackjack money down too. The best game in the casino, if you're gonna have to play casino games, which I do and everyone loves, the best game is craps. Because when you play the pass line and the come bets, the, the casino's only taken about a 1% advantage over you. And on the odds bet, which comes in craps, you're actually head-to-head -head flipping a, po a coin with the casino. It's the only game in the casino that there's zero advantage over the customer. So if you're going to play in the casino, I'd shoot them dice, but there's no doubt about it that in the long run, sports betting is always going to be better for the better. Oh, absolutely. Listen, sports betting is a 50-50 proposition. My wife, on the other hand, she is a slot machine addict. She needs therapy. And I sit there and I watch her and I'm going, this is crazy. I don't play slots. I don't play table games. I'm there. I mean, this is what I do for a living. I'm in the sports book. This is where I've got an advantage. I'm not going and putting money on things where odds are stacked against me. I like 50-50 propositions. But let me also ask you something here, something, the new wave that's right. taken over Vegas. It's the in-game wagering. Right. You see a lot of guys doing it. I don't partake in it for reasons we'll talk about here in a minute. But your thoughts on it. And by the way, in-game wagering, basically you're sitting there throughout the game. Hey, is this guy going to get a first down? Is this guy going to rush for this so many yards in this quarter? Is this team going to convert on this fourth down try? This is something that Vegas tried in the 80s. They put little booths in the sports books and you could bet baseball every pitch, every inning didn't really work. The difference is now in the computer age, everyone is technically advanced. They love having the little handhelds there and they're action junkies and they've turned a, a regular game into a slot machine by instead of having one risk, you have risks every single down. So you get a player to make a hundred bets in one game rather than one bet and every bet is vigorous. Every bet is retail and they keep adding a little and tacking a little bit on and by the end of the day, you're stuck with no money in your pocket and that's no place to be. So I really wouldn't recommend the in-game betting, but I can understand why people love it and certainly why the casinos love it. To me, it's like going to the movie theater, you're buying your tickets and then it's adding the popcorn, the soda and all the right. other stuff because that's where the theater is making their money. Absolutely. So guys, listen, when we return from break, we've got two more games to break down. First one's going to be San Diego and Cleveland. Try to stay awake for that one. But then the big game coming up is going to be Tennessee and Indianapolis. And we'll be back with those two games and more in just a brief moment.